Hey guys, welcome back to Gardens, the untold story. Today we're going to be talking about cover crops with Andy Lopez, the Invisible Gardener, and he's that's one of his songs, guys. So you got to go to SoundCloud and check out the Invisible Gardener. He's got all kinds of songs on there. Hey, hey the last um, month, by the way, guys, we're going to be doing cover crops today. I, yep. I want to do this. I want to do this really cool. Stick around. We're going to be doing cover crops. <laughs> <laughs> And that's what the, that's let's see i have a i think i learned how i, I could do this right so we're sh sharing this screen are we Can yeah you, I'll, you want me to bring it up yes please and just i like it to him you, you know, the two of us the three of us or whatever you me and that little thing are there yeah yeah well there it's it's up uh andy so oh, I see soil health that. cover crops soil biology and cover crops oh boy i did it again so <laughs> i tried to i i thought there it is no, that's not it. Darn. Okay, I, I I had it going back and forth, but for some reason it doesn't I, want to go back and forth to you. I it just saw to... your mouse there a second ago, Andy. Yeah, my there, but this is not. Yeah, uh, uh, I screwed up. I'm having a hard time. See, this is uh, it's up here, but it's not letting me move on to the next one. See, I'm like I'm not hitting anything or nothing. I don't know what's going on. You're not on the right screen to be doing that or, or the right um, tab on your computer. You have to switch back to the other tab to be able to do that. Well, that, that is ridiculous. Isn't I it? saw your mouse. I saw it Where's was there. Mouse? There it is. There's your mouse. No, no, but this is not, this is slide is not even. It's oh, there not it is. Giving... I found it. <laughs> All right. Oh, my God. It was a little thing in the corner over here. There should be a better way to do this. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. There should be a, a hot key on your keyboard where you. Yeah, right. Something I guess just push that we go to we go directly to the other one. Anybody out there as good as this? Tell me how to set it up, and we can just go right to it. Anyway, <laughs> I, I made the letterings bigger, man. Cool. Cooperation. Some plants have developed a spe uh, specified natural process between soil microbes to provide themselves as well as to others, not just nitrogen, but also minerals. Cover crops are plants that are grown specifically to, to protect and improve the soil. They are typically planted during periods when the main crop is not growing, such as during the winter or between harvests. One of the things I want to get across to people is that there are many, many different types of cover crops. Remember before I call it green manure? Yeah, yeah. And that's right. a good well, term for it. That is a really good term for it because it's like, you know, we, we give it, uh, we think of manure, you know, biology, right? Manure is yeah. very active stuff, you know, and we think it stinks. And, you know, that's the reason why we add it because it's rich in all these different microbes and stuff. But people don't realize that many plants are the same, the counterpart, but in the plant, the plant version, that the root systems of these cover crops have specific microbes with them, that they, they actually grow them and they grow them with the plants. And then when you put yeah. it, when they're growing in the ground, they, they're actually there in the ground doing doing their thing, exchanging between the soil and the plants. And that's what's so so really amazing about it. And on top of that, there, so there, because there's so many different, you, you won't realize some of the different types of cover crops that I have done over my many uh, billions of years of growing, of being a garden. Billions of years, billions of minutes anyway, but I'm sure you've you've tried a variety that's extreme. Oh, oh man, it's really, it really interesting. One of my, well, let's see, you know, I remember one year I did, so I had like 14 raised beds, right? I'm right. just going to move on to the next one because you can sort of look at them as we go, all right? Okay. And, and so I have 14 raised beds. You like the artwork? You like the uh, graphics? Yeah. So I had 14 raised beds, and the reason was because of my philosophy was I'm going to have four of them at any one time not being used, just have cover crops growing in them, right? Right. And so I learned I learned that uh, when you, when you have when you have raised beds, the biggest problem is you don't really you, you need to learn how to how to uh, keep the soil healthy in that because it's a giant container, right? Yeah. You keep You're growing a big stuff. Pot. 
Yeah, you keep growing stuff in there, you're gonna you're not gonna be having any healthy soil growing at all, right? No, not a, not unless you're doing a system that that you can have all the levels of biology inside of the soil system. But yeah, if you've just got a raised bed and you're not touching the soil underneath, um, it's it's eventually not going to work very well. And right, right. nutrients. Exactly right. So I learned from from my experience, and you know, uh, a lot of times I have actually evolved over the many years doing it. Because what what I would do is see is I have these four beds, and I would say, okay. That bed, I'm going to plant peanuts. This bed, I'm going to do sunflowers. And this bed, I think I'll do some type of legume, like, like yeah. peas, you know, or I'll do some other type of below-ground crop. Like I would love to do a lot of times I do onions or even carrots. Uh, yeah. uh, there are a variety of other plants that, that the, the roosters are really cool. Plus, you can, well, you can harvest a little bit, but mainly the leaves and everything would get turned right over. Uh, there are mm -hmm. lots of different ways that you don't even need to because uh, what I would do is, but my one of my fa favorites are the ones that you can actually eat, <laughs> like the peanuts, right? Peanuts are makes a really good cover crops. They have really okay. amazing root. They have amazing root systems that go down really deep. Okay. Below, normally when you do a raised bed, right? Most people what they do is you know they just lay a piece, lay make a raised bed starting from the ground up, really you know 14 inches and put a around it and maybe if they're smart enough they would dig a little hole and do go for go for wiring and that's it right you know they, they yeah. fill it with soil but a, a real professional like me would say okay let's go down so i would go down so you have the space of the raised bed but i would go down my height i would stand there literally stand there and i could barely see my head i'm six five okay i would go down six feet right Okay, so you're saying you would dig out the soil and you then you would build a bed on top. Is right, I would have. Saying? Right, wherever the bed goes, it, it, so if it's a two by eight, it, it, it's usually they're usually two feet wide, or yeah. no, four four feet wide, two feet. You, you know, you can reach in. Two, you yeah. don't want it so wide you can't reach in. So yeah, I, two I, feet I, I from each side. I usually yeah. make it right four feet uh, uh, wide and about ten feet or however long you want to do length of it. Right. Yeah. So that's the same size. You you would make your hole identical to what the, the bed. So you would just dig yep. down so that you know dig down that and you, you go down. I, I tell people go down as far as you can. You know, uh, if you can't go down too far, that's as far as you can go. But the reason for that, and then you, I built uh, walls. I basically get rocks and put rocks in the bottom and rocks all on the sides, and that way go okay. for proof it, and then. I, I make it so that the soil goes right on up into the where the, the raised bed. So some of the beds can actually be buried in the ground, or you can have other systems so that it goes below ground too, so that yeah. people you know, right? But but uh, but then you have a you have a complete a really cool system that if you learn how to rotate the planting that things that are growing in there. So when you do the, the whole purpose of the cover crop is not to harvest it, but let it go through a cycle. Yeah, right. Let it go Turn through back into the soil that is is necessary. It's right. the and bi it's, biological material, the organics. That's right. And if you have the biology there, or if you have the sources of biology, like for example, if you have earthworms in there, right? Mm -hmm. Then they you can't pull it all out, roll it till you can't do anything to it other than let everything decompose in there, right? You have to keep yeah. layer, you learn how to layer, you add a layer of different things throughout the in that in that one year when you when you're leaving a fallow, you literally are keep adding things as it decomposes. You add things to it, and it mm -hmm. builds the soil right back up again. And then the following year, you grow, you start growing. You can go for two or three years straight without having to renew the soil again. Yeah, well, and, and that's what the farmers in my area used to do. You know, you would you would only plant a field for so many years, and then you would leave it a, a follow for a year, um, and and you know just work in the green material at the end to give it back into the biology right so, so that would be so and, and uh if you and so if you have that's and that's right so if you have the reason why you have so i had so many beds is because you know i i always wanted yeah. to have a good amount of them be able to lay fallow for the for that whole year really you just do nothing but so sometimes i would add you know animal manure to them right a little bit of animal yeah. manure to it a lot of times I can even use it to actually compost. I started doing composting, I mean by composting, kitchen waste, 
put it in there, right? You know, yeah, yeah. I would, I would do that too, but I, I, I found that that's not was such a good idea uh, because it's the animals will still go in there to eat the stuff because it's not right. It's not, it doesn't, it's not a good composting place because it doesn't heat up. The, the, the bed like that in the ground will not heat up. You will not, not like you have a pile of compost on, the, on top of the soil, you know, and, and you wa have water to it, and you know how it heats up, right? Yeah. So that's the, that's the biggest difference in terms of having, having so if you're not really composting in this, in the, so I learned that from experience. You say, well, let's just take some of this gar kitchen waste and put it into the, uh, into the bed and let it let it you know do it sink but so it's not the, quite the same thing it's like you see yeah. the soil biology you see little microbes no that's a that's a nice one andy so yeah it says it increases soil biology but for writing a source of oxygen through deep system deep root system that's yeah. one of those things that the cover crops really does is that it turn it aerates literally aerates everything down there well, and unless you have roots growing in the soil, your biology can exist in that soil. So you that's where the one of the benefits of cover crops, you know, even uh, having a, a smaller or shorter crop underneath your major crop, it's the more roots, the more biology and the more use of the light uh, photons from the air to feed that biology and grow it larger. That's right. So I have evolved over the years uh, as to... Uh, that, that to have a constant year-round cover crop all the time, a specific ones that, that are very, very good. And I found some of the really cool native varieties of grass here in California. There's a, mm -hmm. a, a plant called Carapia. And, Carapia. Uh, Carapia, yeah, yeah. And I don't think I have, uh, if I had thought about it, I have it on my Mac. Like I take, have lots of pictures, but my Mac and my PC don't talk to each other. <laughs> they... They're, 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 they don't like it, yeah. They, they Linux and, and Windows, you know, they just don't want to. Commingle. They don't share anything at all. They don't share anything at all. You can bring up the uh, who you are. I mean, you, the other thing again. Uh, what do I do? You you just uh, you, took, you just took it right off the screen, Andy. It's gone. Yeah, I did. I did that. I did that. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I did. <laughs> So, you, whether you wanted to or not, you did it, man. It's yeah, not, I, did. I didn't have anything to do with it. I'll get better. I'll get better at it. so what basically. So I've learned that that because I would say, okay, let's rotate the cover crops, right? So, to have different kinds of but mm -hmm. uh, in your case, you would say biology, but I would say microbes, because I realized yeah. that different Same plants. Thing. I don't know how I, I realized I just said I was logical about well, that plant has a certain biology, right? This plant has a certain biology. I've learned that you know marijuana has a certain biology. I, I learned that yeah. all the different herbs. One of the things about them is that they have. Well, a and it's biology. not just the biology, my friend. It's it's the compounds that exist inside that plant, like your your exactly. um, well, dandelion I mean. is high in calcium. That's exactly what I mean, right? It's exactly yeah. what yeah. I mean, right? They all have unique properties that, because of the biology, how the biology handles it, right? Yeah, they, yeah. They end up with certain. Uh, uh, minerals and certain proteins and certain combinations of things that are really amazing that only those types of plants bring exactly yeah right right so that's really cool so i would learn to try to have a i would rotate the cover crop kind of thing you know uh but then then i find out that that's because that's a lot of work to try to ro be rotating cover crops right you know i mean if i was on a big farm and not do it in the ground I would wrote, I would do that. I have friends who have big properties, and they would say this acreage is left alone. As a matter of fact, they would let the animals roam through it, the cattle roam through it, or whatever yep. roam through Pigs it. Pigs and chickens and, and let, all let them, that's good. Let them roam. Let them do their thing, and then you can move them over there next year to another part of the property, and then this yep. year, and then you can go back to growing on that year. So, but not too many people have the ability to do that kind of animal thing. So. So you have your. It all depends on where you live and what you're really trying to do and try to grow. But if you're growing in a raised bed, in a raised bed, you have the ability to to increase the biology simply by rotating the, what you grow in the raised bed. <laughs> well, exactly right. Right. Think, right. Yeah, we we have to always consider it, it. Everybody's circumstance is different. There's people that are growing vegetables in their apartment you know, in, in a, a grow tent, 
Um, and then there's the people with the, the small homes in the city and the, the little bit of a footprint. Even the guys doing rooftop gardening. Um, we want to talk to everybody, right? And and cover crops <laughs> is good for everybody. When I uh, I grew up in New York City, which is uh, very limited in terms of having big yards in the back and stuff like that. Yeah. So I, lear I learned to have a uh, rooftop garden. I don't know yeah. if I ever told you about this, but I I think I was in Manhattan for a while, and I I, and I, cool. I, I managed to do some uh, tomato growing on the roof, and they they uh, I had a, a, a see a, maybe I should tell you the truth. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I, I I I admitted I was throwing tomatoes down from the rooftops. Okay. I, I admit it. Not and you, Andy. Oh. I wasn't. Well, I wasn't. You were throwing them at the teachers at school because they were they were spraying chemicals or what? No, no, I wasn't throwing them. I was just dropping them from the roof. So okay. on the top of the on the top of floor, you can just lean over and just drop a tomato as people walk by. You know, and splat. Yeah. And I would yeah. say sorry because you know sometimes the tomato plants actually will grow over the side and you you miss it. And they were false. Yeah, I didn't have anything to do with it. The tomatoes just went over and it was like, you know. yeah, you just had them growing so close but, to the edge. Yeah. I, yeah. Lear I learned that to to make some really cool uh, raised beds on roofs. Yeah. You have to account, you have to uh, uh, adjust for drainage. You know, yeah. I would make I would make them out of pallets. You know what a pallet is, right? You have those. Oh, yeah. Boards, right. So I would put them down on the roof. Uh, rather than walking on the roof, you walk on the pallet. Yeah. And then because the, the pallet spreads the weight and everything. So then you make your raised bed on top of the pallet. Yeah. And you're spreading the weight out. And the re the weight gets spread out. And then you have the, yeah. the raised bed. So the raised beds hold water, but they drain. Yeah. You have drainage so they, they can drain. That was one of the first ways I was making a juice because I realized that th I can actually sprinkle. So, but I would add water to it, you know, when it's dry. If I do it just too much, I would turn it on. It would come out. And go, oh, this stuff is, should be really good for plants. And that was my like my first liquid thing. I don't know if I was spraying it, but I was definitely put, giving it back to plants and stuff like that. And, and, yeah. I, I, so I, and I learned that, that because that, you know, if you grow the same thing over and over again, it doesn't really do well anymore. Hi, Rod. And remember, any, you guys have any questions, just feel free to uh, send it to me because, you know, that's what, we're, what's what I'm here for is to help you out to grow, you know. So I've been growing a lot in, in containers for almost all my life. And yeah. I've, lear I've learned that the, it, you can actually just change. The, the virus is so easy to keep alive, and yet it's so easy to kill. But it's really easy to keep alive if you know a little bit of what you're doing, in, in the, especially in a container. And you learn that, for example, you don't want to have plastic type of containers or rubber containers. You really want to have something more natural like wood or rock, anything that imitates nature rather than some plastic stuff that's not, is not good. Uh, also, paints and leads and those kinds of things. You can't. One lady made a raised bed out of wood and then she treated it chemically. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, I've seen people do that. Right, and so and it's like, like okay. <laughs> right, it's like okay, and then that that same lady says, "I want I want to have an organic garden, but my lawn two feet away I has Roundup in it." Yeah, yeah. They they don't work hand in so, hand like that for some reason. So I learned I learned that the 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 cover crop. So when I actually had a garden, and I wasn't I, I was never I'm more of an aquarium in nature in terms of growing. I, I read mm -hmm. the uh, square foot the square foot gardening book. You read that one? Yeah, I, 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 I actually haven't read it, but I I know I. Uh, so I basically say I I don't think I'm going to go. I'm an Aquarius, so I think Mother Nature doesn't really. Measure things out, spaces, everything else. A cool idea. Everybody has a certain amount of space that they can grow in and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, and it, it works if you, you really get into it. Me, I just uh, lay them out accordingly to the way I feel like at the time, how they want to grow together. And, and I've learned that the more uh, wide blend of living things, living in the same space together, the better environment you're going to have. More roots in the soil. And that's what it comes down to: more roots in the soil, right? And they interlace and intermingle. And they, inter and they, they interlace. Yeah, I give, I give you a really cool. And the other thing is, are some of very some very obvious uh, crops that that are, uh, are they also make a good cover crop. And it really depends what you're growing above, because you know there there are many crops that you grow above ground, and many crops you grow below ground. 
So you can actually yeah. grow below ground and above ground crops together because they, 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 right? You know, and even the roots are all below ground, but some of them have potatoes and stuff like that, whatever, below ground. Well, I, I just want to point out in, in both of us have pictures in behind us with trees and grass surrounding the trees. That's roots in, in soil. That's all it takes. Like it's Mother Nature knows how to do it. And yeah, what's well, interesting too about lawns and stuff like that is that they they it, it, law, anything can be grown organically and naturally. If you have a you know you can really enrich the soil, makes the soil alive and stuff. Uh, and, and it doesn't even make make any difference whether, for example, I tell I teach people that you you can have a lawn and and really have a, a water a decent lawn, in other words, a lawn that does, bees love in my crimson clover I planted. Oh, send me some too. I love crimson clover. I especially like crimson honey that bees make from crimson clover. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's very exotic. Very, 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 very exotic. I forgot what I was talking about. I know I was talking about honey. Well, no, we were talking uh, uh, actually about <laughs> roots intermingling in the soil and the plants working together in cover crops and and the intermingling, like for, for what most of the people in our audience on, on this station, they, they have a tall plant like a tomato. They need that, that lower, um, you know, cover. A lot of them are in the raised bed. So what would you recommend or would you recommend going and looking at the different plants like you were saying or we were saying earlier where each one has its own um, thing that it adds back into the soil like calcium, magnesium, etc.? You know, would you recommend more of a cycle uh, of those types of plants through a system? What you're talking about is companion planting. Yeah, because that's that's basically the same thing as the cover crops do is they provide a benefit. And so usually they provide a benefit for the wherever plants are around them. Yeah, yeah. A, a cover crop really that's so you plant the whole crop as by itself and you you don't have anything else you crow that and then you turn that over so it's a little slightly different uh yeah well my uh, evolution has grown to where everything is a cover crop yeah well true er can, everything, can every, everything can be a cover crop and i've learned yep. that that uh it uh and, and some of the benefits are obvious uh, like, for example, you talked about a tomato. So you can actually grow a tomato and a potato together. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And it's one of the interesting things about, about this is, I don't know if I mentioned it, but you take a potato, cut a little hole in the center, put a tomato seed in, and you plant it. Mm -hmm. That's called, I call it a tomato. <laughs> okay. And, that, and what happens is the potato plant grows underground. It's a tuber. It grows underground. has little heads. Right. Squash and beans. You get to learn which crops together are amazing because one protects yep. the other one, and the, they feed each other, and they they help the whole environment. Everything else growing around them benefits. It's like the, well. the French marigold with tomatoes, right? right. 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 That's right. the perfect match. Right. So, and especially yep. in the in the home environment, you know, in home garden kind of environment, kind of things where you don't really have a big ecosystem, you want to, you have a little miniature ecosystem. You'll be surprised. And how uh, other plants affect things around, around. you know, because I'm learning a, really a lot about native type of plants that can be planted. What, what was that? Yeah. I missed that. What was the last one? The strength of the cooperation among plants to enhance the overall environment for mutually beneficial results. I wonder if you have to say that you have to hold your breath when you say that. Wow. It's, that is a, like... I have to write that down. Uh, I'm not trying to enhance the overall environment for mutually beneficial results. Exactly what we're saying, right? Right, and, and it's, yeah. it's 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 mind blowing because you, if you get just the right amount of the right plants, you can just say, "Whoa, look at that! Everything grows." Because they do like potato. Like I was talking about tomato and potatoes. So you yeah. know, tomatoes get attacked by certain plants, certain mm -hmm. insects, and the only reason why they do that is because they're missing the minerals. Potatoes never get attacked by any of these insects at all because they're rich in this, those minerals. You put the two together, and the tomato will uh, take what the potato has to give to it. Yeah, yeah. And, and there is that synergistic relationship, and, and one's biology draws stuff up better than the other, and they trade back and forth. It, it's like uh, us living in a town, you know, in the old days where you had to trade back and forth. One person 
had this to, to sell and another person had this and all of this was trading back and forth. So you'll find that you'll find that there's so many different variations that one of my favorites is tomatoes and garlic, for example. Okay. So I would grow garlic at the base of the tomato, the tomato plant, and the tomatoes have a garlic taste to it. And no, no bug will come over to a tomato and say, you're a tomato. They will say, no, I don't see a tomato here. I just see a weird looking garlic. And I'm out like, <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. And, and I've done that before with people. And they say, you know, there's something wrong with my tomato. It tastes like garlic. I go, yeah, because that I plant. And the different kind of garlic you plant makes a different too. So I would plant elephant garlic. Okay. I actually had a guy down the road. Uh, uh, that's what he was growing uh, for a lot of years. He was growing the elephant garlic. So elephant garlic will sink up anything growing anywhere near it. And you plant a rose too, too close to the elephant garlic. You smell that <laughs> rose, it'll smell like garlic. Okay, that up. means I can't grow any around my wife because, you know, she's sweet right now. I wouldn't want her to turn to garlicky, you know. No, it doesn't work that way. But the reason ah. why it, it spreads out is because that's proof that it's in the soil. And that goes, yep. the, the smell doesn't go through the air of the garlic. The smell is transmitted through the root systems to the other, and to that, into the other root systems of the other plant. Yeah. See, you yeah. know what I mean, right? And so there has to be a system that transfers from one type of plant to the other plant. And that is, to me, proof that something's being transferred across. And the garlic acts like the sugar. Remember, I talk about sugar, how sugar the, the, in plants basically use sugar to transfer minerals. That's a source of transference, of mineral transference. Because the, mm -hmm. the, the sugar and the minerals bind each other. And, yeah. the, and the plant juices, so the plant... It specifically evolved to take the sugar and the, and the minerals along with it to, to, to for itself. That's what mm -hmm. photosynthesis is all about. It's really, really cool the way the, the structure was laid out on purpose. Like, who designed this, right? Supercomputer. Let's say that the, it, 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 the guy was going, well, let's see now. You need to get the minerals in your body, and the minerals yep. are over here. Now, how are we going to do that? What's the best way that we are going to... Get those minerals into you. Now, try eating this. Now, eat this mineral. Eat this. No, that doesn't work. No. It, the, 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 and the only real way is through the biology or the different biology, because it's not just one creature, not one micro. It's a wide range of microbes all doing the same thing with one goal of getting the biology, right, of getting across to the other plants. Yeah. It's yeah. Really, really cool. And there are some plants... They come already. That's why they're so good as cover crops. They already have in, in, their, in their root systems the capability to take nitrogen, for example, uh, to yeah. take iron, to take different types of minerals. It's already in their root system, genetically built in. So if you plant yeah. those things, you and you and, and so a lot of times when you grow, I don't know if you're uh, have any beans or peas and stuff like that. You normally you have to inoculate the soil. You have to buy this inoculant to put into the soil so they can. Uh, uh, produce, you know that, right? Um, I've never had to use any in my life, actually. I, I just put seed in the ground and the beans come <laughs> up and the peas come up and, uh, you know, well, I pick they, them and I eat them. Well, they sell they sell this and not when you buy, the, buy it, that encourages them to, to bloom and encourages the roots to work. I think I think it's because the, the you have to help them grow because they're they're, they're not organically grown. They're not very strong. They're not very healthy. I mean, if you have normal, yeah. you know, to do that, but you, you got to give them the cocaine to make them grow. Isn't that like my, micro or miracle grow? Give them the cocaine to make your plant grow. Yeah. So so the so it, what it, so it, it, what's it? So for me, uh, what I do on the people's properties. Because I look, so when I go to a property, I don't see vegetables. I'm seeing, like you see in the back, you see lawns. Uh, yeah. Well, you're trees. living in Malibu. I mean, come on. You're you're going to, <laughs> to estates, my friend. I mean, they, exactly they right. look like the picture I got behind me, the Zen garden. And, but that's what you create, is you're creating that Zen garden. I really have to uh, tell my, my – because I have uh, some really cool pictures on my – iPhone that I did today of this estate I was at today, and it was like uh -huh. holy cow, holy cow! It's like, and the people are so happy, and it's all organic. 
But it, on that one property, you have so many different types of plants from so many different parts of the world, all yeah. requiring di all genetically were evolved with the different biology biology from that part of the world. Yeah. All of them are functioning as one place, and they all have to sort of work together. Mm -hmm. And they all they they have one thing in common: is they're all being attacked by the city chemicals in the city water. Right, mm -hmm. right. And yeah. Now you know, as, as it gets so. It's 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 so what I've learned to do, and we talked about this before in terms of, uh, so I, 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 te I keep teaching people all the time. First of all, I, 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 I'm not, I haven't been saying it as as well as you've been saying, more roots in the soil. I love that. You see, because nope. I, yeah, because I, you know, no, I've just been, I've always been saying, telling people, you want a cover crop, you yep. want to have a ground cover, a living ground cover, I and. and and so I, I entirely missed the whole real fact of why you want the living ground cover is more roots in the soil, which is like, well, and you, there's more green to catch more photons of energy and put that into the soil to feed everything. And, and it's just that synergistic relationship. So my that's brother. why it's so cool to talk to other people like yourself who can Say the same thing I've been saying, but in such a different way. You go, well, that is really cool. <laughs> yeah, we're saying the exact same thing, you know, just in a different way. More roots in the soil. I love that. Yeah. I wish I had talked to you like 50 years ago because I would be saying more roots in the soil. That's exactly the reason. <laughs> it's, why, why okay, think, think of building a house. The more laborers you have putting your house together, the faster it gets <clears throat> built. Well, we're our biology is that workforce in the soil, and so we need more and Every it's they need their houses. What, what do you think the house of a bio uh, of a uh, microbiology is? It's the leaf, it's the root, it's the stem. That's where they live, man. That and in the soil structure. So, uh, so what's in really interesting is like I was today, I was at this place, I've been there for about 20 years. Cool. Uh, it's a very uh, some very wealthy people are, are owned it and they asked me to come out. This is 1984. What's wrong with my trees? And I says, you do not have any soil. <laughs> I tell you, you have no dirt. soil. This stuff is called substrate. It's supposed to be below the soil. And yeah. you, the, the layer on top is supposed to be soil. You have no soil anywhere yeah. on your property. You're garden you a hard pan. Every time anything drops, they immediately clean it up and haul it away. Grass mm -hmm. clippings haul it away. You water, feed everything like crazy. And he goes, uh huh, uh, yeah, uh, right. You know, so, um, hmm, uh, right, okay. So, what can we do for these trees? What was wrong with my tree? And, so he, <laughs> he, he finally gave up on it because you know um, he didn't have so much money to throw. People with money, they just keep throwing stuff at it, throwing stuff at it. it doesn't really work, but who cares? As long as it's still looking green, and make, but they do new plants. Buy a new plant. Buy a new plant. Right. Just get another yeah. tree. Right. So he sold it to uh, another person who uh, has a couple of properties all over the place, and uh, the wife is very much into organics, and she found me because people find me. Okay, yeah. I don't have to advertise or do anything. They just come out of the woodwork. Anyway, uh, she says, what's wrong with these trees? <laughs> and I said, you don't have any soil. She goes, shit, <laughs> I knew that. Can, what can we do? I said, well, you have to start building the soil up. You have yeah. to start bringing in soil, bringing in compost, uh, you have to yeah. do things to encourage organic soil. material with then bring in the biology let them break it down right. and make soil you have to do things and so i i got him started on making compost yeah which was a big thing right there because it was like they kept finding we don't want an animal manure in our compost i remember we talked about people well, this is one of those people. That people said, don't want bugs underneath their trees, Andy. Some people are exactly really right. We you don't, don't understand near it because my dogs will roll in it. My kids will play with it. It's like you, you, you know, we can't put it in the vegetable garden. You get E. coli, you get diseases, and I go stop. First of all, when you know when you make compost, you're not gonna you're not gonna have any anything even rec remotely re recognizable to manure. You're not going to have anything yeah. like that at all. And if you don't, you're making it. You don't. People don't know the difference between when something's rotting and something you're, you're making compost. There's a they, big difference. They think the compost in the store is good compost because it's right. got this 100 percent natural says, compost. It says and compost. It says compost. Yeah. Right. So, and that's been 
as long as I've been in business, see, because my business is based upon having some soil to work on. So when I spray microbes, it'd be great if it has to actually have some soil there that I can spray them to. I mean, the, yeah. my, I get some dirty letters from microbes. You, MF, you, you brought me to this place. There's not a house, a room in any place. There's no place for me to live. My family's dead. All my kids are dead. And I'm going to die now. Bye. And it's like, there's no place for them to, which is soil. The substrate, which is like hard paint, it's really basically yep. clay. I tell people, you yep. know what happens to you, man? Water and clay, and then you add heat. It bakes like a, 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 they call, they have those bottles that you put in the soil to put water in, you know, made out of clay. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 clay. It's hard. It's and like then a dig hard. a big hole and put a, a a root ball in there that doesn't ever drain, and you're just drowning your brand new tree you just bought as well. Right. So this clay is a, like a hard pan. The air doesn't get uh -huh. through. The biology, not, not one living earthworm in there, and so it it has been years. And then the very first thing I told her, I said, "Okay, you want to have a living ground cover." Here in California, there's a thing called Carapia, K-U-R-I-P-A, Carapia. Okay. It's a native California grass. And it, it has roots that go down 10 feet. You only cool. water, you only water once a month. It's fireproof, gopher proof. And because the roots are so incredible, they aerate the soil, they have water in the soil. They're basically a weed that we have taken and, and converted into a ground cover. These things are beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And they were fighting me because they say it's $200 a tray. $200 a tray. Are you kidding me? And then there's shipping. A tray is like, like that. And it has about 30 different little plugs. $200 yeah. plus shipping. So it's almost 300 bucks. And then you have like, okay, my background here. So literally, it will cost them a billion dollars to take the grass out and put it in replace it you know putting a plug about six inches they want you to put a plug every six inches. yeah yeah okay it's like literally a billion dollars so it will cost you to do that yeah and so so being a genius that i that i am i i i, I kept telling you, you don't have to do like sod well i want it right away i want it done like immediately well then spend the money play it down bingo you got it uh, within a couple of months it had the roots starting to get established within two years You'll, you'll be down to watering once every three months. Yeah. But what's so cool about it, and so in, on this property that I was at, it was only maybe three years ago, maybe two or three years ago, when they they realized that when the city hit them with a massive water bill because they were watering like crazy. Yeah. And to keep things from dying. And they, they said, well, we need to conserve water. I said, yeah, I've been telling you that because one of the first things – First thing is I, that I tell the owner, I got to help you control, manage water, water management. Big, yeah. big deal. Soil management. I call it uh, uh, soil partnership. Yeah, I like that. You know? Soil partnership because I try to work with the gardeners. The gardeners, the first thing they have to do is use the compost that I tell them to. They can't go to the store and buy the CRAP that's there and expect anything to happen. You want some living, live compost. And this, yeah. these are the people that I can recommend that you get them from. And that's yep. I want you to start using that. Then I want you to buy uh, from another company. I, it's called Dr. Earth. And they'll make a good uh, a good sp uh, uh, sponsor, by the way. Dr. Earth. And Dr. Okay. Earth has all the micro and stuff like that. We can talk about one of these days. I can show you what's in the back of them. Uh, and then I'm also supposed to show you all where I buy all the different microbes and stuff and uh, from Amazon, whatever. I'm happy to go over that, too. I'm actually happy to see what Leighton and much other people microbiologists say about this stuff because yeah. I can only, I, when I buy something, I don't entirely believe what they say, <laughs> but I do. Well, believe Layden I, can look under the microscope and go, uh, yeah, no, that's dead Andy. Or he's going to go, shit, man, where'd you get this stuff? <laughs> I, I, right. I, I know that m these things cannot, you know, uh, I have no, see if it's in a powdered form, the microbes either dead or, or alive, right? Well, they're either in, in a cyst form or they're right. not there at all. Yeah. Right. So in the cyst form means they're not dead. It's just hanging out. Yeah. Yeah. They're just they're just lazing around. Uh, okay, so that, those are, so the, way, the way that I can tell that they're not that they're not dead is mm -hmm. through results. Exactly. Empirical evidence. Way. And also I'm very good at so I, I would buy something and I would look at, you know, the way the information comes to me is really cool, not just Amazon, but I get information from lots of different sources. 
and then I and then I I don't believe the ad, but I read what they say. We make it. This is how we do. It. This is about. These are the ones that the microbes are, or that the, this particular uh, container you know has. And I, yeah. there's like trillions of names. That doesn't mean anything to me. All those different names of the different. As this, as this. Okay, yeah, great. That's what I was looking for. No, I, what I'm looking for is because I I can make them. I could I could if I was a millionaire and I would have a manufacturing plant to make all this stuff. But other people are making them. If they make anything good, why yeah. not use that? Right. That's why I tell well, you guys. You, you want a good human can folic acid, Andy? I'm always I always want good human folic acid sources. Okay, well, in, in the description of uh, the show uh, is a link to uh, Quad Egg. They, uh, so we actually had uh, Leah Oram on the, the Soil Matters here a few weeks ago, uh -huh. and she gave us a discount code. Um, and the, this is Quad Egg. This is for in the garden. And what then Iron, what's that? What is it? Quad Egg. It's, it's a humic and folic um, combination. And they is have one enzyme, for human. Enzyme, is it enzyme or is it just folic acid? Humic, um, it's human. It, it, it's got. I, I'd have to grab the bottle. It's. It's. Uh, I'm not close to to me, but check check out their their website. There's. Uh, uh, it's very good stuff. Good. I learned. I, I, what I'm learning is that when I first started, you, you had to really look really hard to find things. Now, yeah, they're, they're just popping up everywhere. Which is really wonderful. People are starting to, uh, and these are not just small farmers. I mean, that's why Acres here say big time farmers. They're really yep. into this stuff. And I'm learning that more and more people are making some really incredible things that are wonderful to use. And yep. I've always felt the more of a blend, the better. You learn how to blend stuff together that works, makes yep. them work with each other, you know. Uh, I, I used to have a nice source of humic acid and, and folic acid. Uh, the company's no longer around. Uh, yeah, uh, but you go through a, 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 on a yearly basis. Different companies start producing different things. You know, the different rock dust companies have come and gone, and a whole bunch is still around. You know, is that is that your wife? Yeah, the, the big ones are uh, as soon as you go through the kitchen, the look down on the left. Hi, mom. She she Hi. brought me two bottles. Okay, okay. this is a full year two. Um, okay. So, they make a foliar spray, they make a folic yeah. acid, and then they make a humic acid. And they, they do commercial size, they do farms, etc. What does it uh, say? Livestock what does it industry. Say what does it What's say that? on it? What does it say it, on it? Okay, the, the lettering is so small, you can't read I would it? have to get my glasses and then a magnifying glass. That's why I sent her for the bigger jugs. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. How, how, tell you what, guys, we're get, we're going to get Lily to to read what's on it because I'm not going to try. What am I reading? You're, you're reading what's in it. Oh. Can you guys? Okay, I might have to turn the mic up. Let let me know, Andy. Okay, the fuel a uh, fuelonic. Yeah. Boost uptake. Uh, it has uh, 1.5 percent fulvic acid. 3.5 cent organic matter derived from Leonodite coal. Cool. Lenodite. Yeah. Yeah, it's Lenodite. Lenodite. The huma humonic boost roots uh, has a 5% humic acid, 20% humic acid uh, color metric, and again, uh, Le uh, uh, Lenodite coal. Uh, and right. then they've got F2 foliar, which is the little bottles. This that, is your uh, foliar spray. This is the foliar spray. Guaranteed analysis of sulfur, 3.9%, boron, 0.2%, manganese, 3.1%, zinc, 3.7%. And again, uh, derived from uh, zinc sulfate, manganese sulfate, um, disodium octoberate tetrahydrate. Yeah. So that's, uh, yeah. That's and they've the got one. a human grade one as well that I actually, I just started taking what, here. What, what, what are we human grade for people? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. They've got, a, um, it, it tastes like uh, citrus. Citrus ginger. It's really yummy. Yeah. It's really, really quite tasty. 
Well, I'm glad that they have it in the foliar form because that's one of the reasons. One of the things I learned about one of the reasons why I do is a spraying is because yeah. the root systems are not working. Yes. So, you, you, yeah. so it takes uh, it takes some time to get the soil working so that it heals the, root, the plant the root alive root. with the foliar by feeding it and then feed the soil and get the the root of the problem. Right. So so the foliar cast is really good to add to other things. I, and I, I, I probably we wouldn't do it in the same common. And in other words, I wouldn't make a a, uh, a microbial mix and put the folic acid in at the same time with it. Yeah, yeah, probably do it not. separately. I yeah. probably would would supply them separately. There's some things I've learned that's not a good idea to get my microbes bathing in this stuff. You know, well, you, you got, you're, you, you're going to have them fighting each other, and you want the one to do its job and then bring in the other one to do their job. You don't want them, and you know, this particular mixture. It, it, they one of the things uh, that I like about them already is that they're using boron. I don't know if I told you about yeah. this about boron. Oh, boron's beautiful. Yeah, well, but please, 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 because for the audience, explain boron. One of the things that when I was in, uh, I went to Fayetteville, Arkansas, uh, to the annual organic conference. Okay, I, I talked to you about Nitron A35, the company that makes Nitron A35. Actually, I don't think you have told me about Nitron. You made it Nitron, N I T R O N A35. Nitron, N I T R O N A35. Uh, make it a point we can, when I talk about resources, I'm going to go through each one again and we'll take the people to the website. But I met, there was a, one of the speakers there was talking. Uh, yeah. it's called, Agri-Grow. Now, Agri-Grow, Agri yeah. Agri -Grow, their main product is a boron product. It's a liquid boron. That's their main product. I'm not sure if it's 20%. It's pink. I call it the pink stuff because it's literally pink. Okay. And boron is an end. It's a really cool. It's a really cool. Um, remember I talked to you about the exotic minerals? Yeah, yeah. Well, guess what? It's boron. boron. Exotic minerals. Boron is one of those exotic minerals. Okay. And that, and that the the main thing one has to learn about any exotic minerals is that you have to blend it together in the right proportions. Otherwise, exotic becomes toxic. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. So boron, it, I, I added. They want you to to add it like you do like a homopathic one one thousand, or yeah. or you add it with. Other products like they have the manganese, manganese, mag, uh, mag, uh, manganese. manganese. Yeah, right. That's also an exotic one, too. So yep. they have a couple, and there was another one. There were three or four different things. All of them were exotics that were added together, and okay. I'm assuming they were added in the right proportions so that when you e. give it to plants, the plants are getting those in the right proportions. And, and that's, that's, the, that's key. the key. That's yep. the key. That's yeah, don't get it out of balance. It needs to stay in. We want homeostasis. That's that's the key is to produce it in balance. So you'll learn. Yeah. That, so I learned from experience when I when I do my mix that the microbes will make. For example, when I go to a person's home, you, you know that they have been using chemicals pretty much all their lives. Uh, right. Chemicals on the lawn, chemicals in the fruit trees, chemicals everywhere. And you know, if you were, and I used to charge people for a, a lab test, they would take the soil and now you put it in a bag and send it off to a lab test, right? I right. got a really, a really good company, by the way, that does that. And so cool. they, and the main thing they would find salts, your salt levels and this and that are all really super high. You're killing everything. And no biology yeah. because they're living in the desert. It's, it's a highly salt environment where there'd be, Whatever you know, chemical you'll find it's too much of a. It's basically a salt. Yeah. And so well, I learned yeah. that one of the things that happened if you start spraying microbes on a on a property like that is that it releases the the, the salts. The well, salts yeah, it, release. it, it releases the bindings. It breaks the the salt off of the the calcium molecules. There's only so many spaces. It's going to break a certain amount off. And it literally burns up the plants. Oh yeah, and fast. Very, yep. very, very fast, like overnight. It's the same thing when you ask. So magnesium sulfate, I think that's maybe one of the things they say was on there, but it's it's, it's yep. magnesium. And yep. magnesium sulfate, again, is a salt. Any with a sulfate ending to it is a salt. 
And, they and require... if you don't know anything about magnesium, guys, if you have a, you can make a little uh, a can, put magnesium in it, and it'll burn through the block of an engine to a car. Okay, the the chemical reaction when you fire magnesium. So I shouldn't have said that. No, so it's it's an important thing because people don't don't understand how the, the the mix is. That's why, for example, my super seaweed is a it's this carefully blend of yeah. just a wide range of things, but in the right tiny amounts. Originally, yeah. when yeah. I made it, I said one drop per gallon. People could say, "Well, how can one drop per gallon do anything?" One drop per I don't know, and they would literally dump more in it. You know, I'm going, "Oh, geez, oh my god, yeah." Right, right. So it'd be, and I, and I can take in a hundred gallons. I would mm -hmm. take uh, if I if I put a gallon of super seaweed, it would be too much. It won't burn, but it was really really neat. I I've learned I could probably add one cup for every ten gallons of one cup of yeah. super seaweed for every ten gallons of water. So it says hundred gallons be four be five cups. Yeah, five cups, and then you aerate it. You find that you have a billion trillion microbes, but you spray that on the property. And if that's all you sprayed on the lawn, for example, within a month, within a few, within a few weeks, within a week, everything will get literally get burned. Because you have to either really do a lot of watering to keep them from getting burned, or if you water yeah. normally, they will get burned, especially if it's on high normally at normally higher temperatures. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It literally releases all that fertilizer like boom. Yeah. And I've learned I, I learned over and over because I tell people you can't just switch. You you can't just switch. You can't just bring all the heavy guys in and then not expect things to start dying in. You're gonna have to go switch over a slow process. And the best way, the best way is to bring in the soil. Yeah. The easiest and the most mellow way to do that, and because the natural biology in the soil will start to break it up naturally slower. Then, yeah. then if you then if I was to bring in an army of uh, microbes, a and liquid spray. spray, and yeah, yeah, you got to you got to start building the soil. But anyway, the ionic one is uh, I don't know if you guys can see that. Well, that's for people. Yeah, this right? is the one for people, and it's yeah, trace mineral complex. I want twenty percent. I want the company to send me some free samples. Oh <laughs> sure. Well, well, actually, I've I've invited uh, Leah to come on with us. Um, just waiting to hear back on a on a date, uh, for her to come on the show and talk about this product because it's uh it's an amazing you product. Mean, with, with us, send some to Leighton. With us, or, or yeah, you know, yeah, with us. Cool, because you know they the that that product they also have a, a one for plants, right? Exactly. That's right, the foliar right. one first. Yeah. So, so there's the human and and the and and uh, for the plants. So there's a bunch of stuff like that because when I, when I, um, I and I still I still get stuff like they have trace minerals for people, you know, and they, yeah. and, they and they make some some really nice ones and many on the market that I've gone through and I like them. So I have one particular now. I could run downstairs and show you the bottle of it. Yeah. But I also spray it on my plants. I also use it yeah. in making my seaweed. When I make my super seaweed. I get as many different sources of trace minerals as I can. Exactly. Anything that's good for me, anything that's good for me in trace minerals, you can see, you go, oh, look at a nice trace mineral. Wham, I put it in that liquid seaweed. The microbes do not object to that at all. They they go right through that like water. You know, they love that also too. And, and, so, and, and the people can get the super seaweed off of Andy's website, guys. So I don't know. Maybe he'll give you guys a discount code eventually. You know, I, I don't know. That would be cool. I could do that. See, the super seaweed is... Is the thing I tell people. One, one, by the way, one of the things I'm doing now is really cool. Is that people say, "Well, I can't afford to pay you because when I do the hundred gallons, I charge a certain amount. You know, it's a whole, yeah, whole yeah. business based on that, and it costs a lot to do. But I don't just add the uh, four cups of super seaweed. I add all these different other sources of microbes as well to it. I have a certain amount of yeah, blended yeah. together. Just see me this morning. La la la. Some of this. Some of that. Some of this. And you're I learned, a chef. You're pouring your your or no, a, be a you a bartender, a mixologist, or something. Have Bad scientist, heard, I think. Have you ever heard of organic magic? I think you're doing it all the time, Andy. No, what is the name of the product? Out, you know, this is, a, this is the name of a product called organic oh. magic. <laughs> okay. And uh, I can. Uh, 
remind me. I'm more happy. I see. I, I think we can get them on as a, a guest when these diff, these different products. You know, I, I know a lot of them. I, I was telling they they contacted and said we're going to call it the Mir- alternative for Miracle Grow. I says I don't think you should do that. It's just stick stick to your guns and call it organic management. And leave it at that. It's a really cool source of mycorrhiza. You know, that's okay. that's the, the main formula formulation there. And I use that uh, not exclusively, but I use that for almost all the plants, all the properties. Yeah. It's called organic magic. And I think Andy got Andy's based in the States guys. So yeah, he, he does business mm-hmm. in the U S yeah. Yeah. I do business in the world. And some people, if you're yeah. from Mars, I got a good deal for Martians, but hey, uh, cool. Hey, that, uh, the wife <laughs> <from> Venus, <coughs> my, um, uh, super seaweeds and basically a microbiological activator is meant to feed the biology. So yeah. when I get the microbes going in the water, I feed them the super seaweed and aerate them and they go nuts. You see, mm-hmm. see what I mean? And that's what I spray on the, on the property. And I've learned that foliar spray is the key to helping them immediately because they get the mic, the nutrition immediately through their leaves. Yeah. The long term, I teach the long term and short term solutions. The long term solution is the biology and the soul, but that's not just yeah. it. That's just the biology, the life. Healthy roots systems. Healthy root systems de- demand healthy biology soil. You can't have healthy root systems if you have dead soil that doesn't have the biology. And that and so that takes a long time to generate and to maintain. And that's why it's better for the with like the one people person you were talking about, they bring in topsoil and put around their trees so they can have some soil to start with. The sooner they do that, like this paper I was talking yep. about this mansion, I said, 10 years ago, I kept telling you, buy the soil, buy the soil from this company and add some rock dust to it. I'll be happy to spray it with my microbe and start. And also, so what they did was they bought it and they put it right on top of the clay. The wind came and blew it away. Mm-hmm. I said, Not- Whoop. I said, you missed it. Go ahead. I, I want to address Ron's uh, uh, or Rod's yeah. question here. So using kelp all the time is good. No, remember balance. A little goes a long way. You know those little key phrases that we're always spitting out. So you're not going to want to put you know so, that on all the time. I, I've learned that uh, yeah, because when you the best way to eat is not to eat the same thing all the time. You want to have a, a variety of a diet. Kelp yeah. is good, and kelp is very useful to have the trace minerals in it, and it has the right biology. You have to be real careful now of kelp because of the ocean is really toxic. So it's a minor problem with using anything from the ocean because it's getting more and more toxic. Okay, more yeah. and more has uh, micro beads in it, has a lot of forever chemicals in it. You talk about don't eat fish because of mercury. Well, these are concentrated, and so you and you never get a straight answer from any of these companies. Well, how do you get rid? How do you clean? You know, how do you know that it's clean stuff? You're not just giving me more concentrated chemicals. Because well, that's an issue. I mean, I hate calling my product super seaweed. I'm going to put a little arsenic. We don't use seaweed anymore <laughs> because it's like it's it's really serious. And 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 then any of these companies all is all clean ocean water. Yeah, find me an ocean ocean that's clean. Any ocean that actually clean. And so that's find me rainwater that's clean. That's I mean, problem. realistically. But you know, you can grow your own kelp. Yeah, yeah. You can literally grow your own kelp and you have your own source. If you have any kind of property or at all, you can literally grow your own microbes but because yeah. you want the kelp, but you can literally grow. You can have a little pond. You can grow your own kelp dry and use that great source. So you just have to be a be a reporter and say, okay, uh, how, how do I know? I mean, if you really want to get blown away, send it off to a lab and they'll send it back to you. It says, do not eat this stuff. Do not put it on your body. Do not spray it on your plants because it'd be polytoxic. It also depends yeah. where they make it from. You know, if it comes from anywhere in Japan, what do you think? It depends on the side of the island because only one side got nuked, right? But that washed up on California shores. I mean, come on. It's yeah, all over it's the world. No, anywhere around the island, anywhere. And actually, anywhere in the, in the world you go, any deep yeah, ocean anywhere. you go to, anywhere you're going to find a wide variety of chemicals in there already. A wide well, variety. Like go anywhere in the world with a Gega counter and you're going to find radiation because it's freaking everywhere. Exactly. And, the, and, the, and, the, and so kelp is a... Is a it's a uh, accumulator. 
It's not yeah. accumulator. It'll accumulate. Heavy. That's why in the old days it was really good because it was rich in minerals. It was rich in all these things that naturally would be in the right amount because man wasn't there to screw it up. Right? Yeah, all the minerals are yeah. in there in the right amount. But now we have things in there normally not even found in nature that we that we have created. And they get Black into the system, they get into aluminum. the system, right? Yeah. They get into the system. There they are. And so and so if you're using it uh, uh, well, like me, I've sprang, so I get it on me all the time. Yeah. And so part of me says, I need to wear a coat, a, a space suit, a mask and everything. And people say, I thought you said it's not toxic. You should spray. This is, this is just true. You know what I mean? It's like, right? Right? Yeah, yeah. And so that's that's the thing. We have to really be start thinking that we're in a toxic environment and everything is toxic. Yeah. And then so you, so you have to talk and you can't talk to the companies. Hey, how do you filter the system out? Like city yeah. water. There's... Forever chemicals in your city water. We talked a little bit yeah. about last time. See what I mean? And so yeah. even if you just buy the kelp and add city water to the water to make the liquid and spray, there you go. You know, so you're going to find that there's lots more of toxics that we think are in our environment because the things we're using, even things that are certified organic, talk to the farmer and you'll find that they're probably using a lot of things that they're toxic already. Well, because certified organic doesn't mean anything the way they've got it set up now. It's not like it was where you would think, although they don't use anything bad, but the Omri now is so corrupt. It's That's where I love uh, Dragonfly Earth Medicine and their damn pure uh, and doing closed loop cycles on your own property. You know what's going into it. I think right? we're running out of time. We are at the hour, guys. So, um, so that's got my website up. What's that? Flash my website. Flash me. Flash me. Oh, oh, yeah. oh my goodness gracious. There we go. There you it's go. Gardener right. Okay, everybody. Look, uh, we have a whole bunch set up. I think, did you set Did you put in descriptions of the shows, the name of the shows that are coming up? Yeah. 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 We've got I nine shows know. set up, and then we're going to have guests coming on uh, every once in a while when we can okay. grab them. Well, so I'm still working on getting getting the guests to come online here. Yeah, it's, everybody's spaced out doing their own thing, so it's kind of cool, you know. It's and I, summer I, time. Yeah, and it's really <laughs> super heat, and I'm getting ready to do yeah. uh, the uh, workshop, helping people how to grow their own food and survive on your property. Thanks for thanks, Diggity. Nice to hear from you. If you guys take care now, I'll be here next week. He's forcing me to do it. He has a hold of my cat. He oh, won't yeah. give me my cat back. Uh, yeah, of course. And I got Luna Whitcomb and, um, oh, geez, I can't remember his name. He's going to shoot me. Uh, show tomorrow night. And then we've got another damn pure farmer on Friday, guys. And, of course, the OGs on Monday. So Take peace care, out, man. everybody. We'll see Bye. you tomorrow night.